Hello, Lovelace. Welcome to your Friday maths lesson. Uh, as you can see, we're carrying on with the idea of multiplication. But today we're going to have a look at a different strategy. We're going to have a look at an area model as a way to multiply two two digit numbers. OK, hopefully this will all make sense as we work through our lesson. But just to start us off, as usual, a few little warm up questions, this time focusing on four digit by one digit multiplication like we did yesterday. So pause the video and have a go at these three questions. The first one is shown to you using the counters, but you can use the counter method or the column method, up to you. So pause the video, three questions, away you go. Okay, hopefully you've all managed those using whichever strategy is comfortable for you. But here are your answers. 2,123 multiplied by three. We can see that here with our counters. We've got 2,123, three times, and all together, we've got 6,369. You might have used the counters again for 5,439 times four, with an answer of 21,756. Now, as our numbers get a little bit bigger, so this time we're multiplying by nine, it suddenly gets a little bit trickier to do the counter method because it means our picture, our illustration becomes very, very big. We, we would have nine rows of counters. So when we get to these bigger numbers, if, you get, if you're confident with the column multiplication, then that's going to be a lot easier. Okay, but there are your three answers. Now, flashback to year four, when you've started looking at area. These shapes all have the same area, so they all cover the same amount of space. Shape A is a square. Now we know there's a special quality about squares. Squares have equal lengths. So the fact that this side is six centimeters means that this side is also six centimeters. Can you remember how to, how to work out the area of a, a rectangle? I'd like you to work out what these missing sides are going to be. Pause the video. Work it out. Okay, let's take a look. Well, if this square is six centimeters long and six centimeters wide, to find the area, we multiply the length and the width. So we're going to do six multiplied by six, which is 36. For this one, we know it's got the same area because it says so in the question. So the area is 36. What do we have to multiply nine by to get 36? That's the answer that should be here. So we can see nine multiplied by four will give us 36. And finally for C, three multiplied by something is 36. Our missing number there is 12. So this is all based on this idea that to find the area of a rectangle, we have to multiply the length and the width. Okay, that will be a big help as we work through today's lesson. So here's another rectangle, five centimeters by 12 centimeters. What's the area of that rectangle? Well, we're gonna do five multiplied by 12. And that's 60. Now, as our units are centimeters, then our area is centimeters squared. This little two floating in the air here means square. So we'd be able to get 60 one centimeter squares in this shape. So 60 centimeters squared. Now, we can partition this 12, we can split it into two parts. We can split it into a 10 and a two. So one 10 
and two ones. And by partitioning it, we can make the maths a little bit easier for ourselves. So here, we've got an area of five and 10. So five centimeters long, 10 centimeters wide. So we can work out the area of that part of the rectangle because five times 10 is an easier calculation than five times 12. And then we've got five times two to find this part of the rectangle. So we've created rather than one tricky calculation, we've created two slightly easier ones. And if we work those out, then we've got 10, five times 10 to work out this area, and then five times two to work out this area. And the two parts together make the whole rectangle. So this part, the pink part, is 10 times five, which is 50. And then the purple part is two times five, which is 10. All together, that gives us 60. So our total area, just like we'd worked out before, is 60 centimeters square. Right, now, here we've got 12 multiplied by five. We're just using single digits at the moment, just so we, un we can understand the method, but these numbers will start to get bigger as we work our way through the lesson. So here we've got five multiplied by 12, and we're just gonna prove we know the answer because we all know our five times table all the way up to 12. So we know the answer, so let's prove it using this method so we can all understand what's happening. So we've got our five down the left-hand side here, and then across the top, we've got a 10 and two ones. So there's our 12. And what we're going to do is we're going to multiply five lots of 10 and then five lots of two. So let's have a look. So here we go, five lots of 10. There we go. So there's our five lots of 10 and then five lots of the two ones. There we go, okay? So five lots of 10 and five lots of two. And if we work out how many we've got there all together, there are 10 ones all together. So we can exchange that for a 10. And now if we count up all together, we've got 60. Now we, not, we already know that five times 12 is 60, but this just explains how that method works, okay? All right, here's another one. Four times 21. So we've got our four here, and we've partitioned our 21 into 20 and one. We've got our two tens to make our 20, and we've got our one here. Okay, have a think now, working through what the answer for this is going to be. Let's take a look. As we work our way through, we need four lots of 10 here. We need another four lots of 10 here. And finally, four lots of one. So all together, we've got 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 1, 2, 3, 4, 84 altogether. Now, here, we're doing the question 14 multiplied by 21. Well, I can see I've got my 21 here, but I've only got four here, not 14. So this grid would be incorrect. So let's change it. Now we go, here we go. Now our grid works because now we've got our 21 at the top, two tens and one. And then here we've got our 10 and our four ones giving us our 14. So 14 and 21. And just like before, we're going to work our way around the grid. So 10 lots of 10, 10 lots of 10, 10 lots of one, four lots of 10, four lots of 10, and four lots of one. So let's work it through. Okay, 10 lots of 10, 
there we go, is 100. 10 lots of 10 is 100. And 10 lots of 1 is 10. We come to this bottom row, 4 lots of. So 4 lots of 10 is 40. 4 lots of 10 is 40. And 4 lots of 1 is 4. So everything in the white area there, all together, will give us our answer. Okay, so we've got two hundreds. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine tens. And we've got four ones. So all together, 14 multiplied by 21 is 294. I hope that makes sense. All right, let's move on. Now it's your turn. Question one. Kim is using the base 10 to work out 31 multiplied by 22. Kim, use Kim's model to help you complete the answers or complete the sentences. So here we are, down the left-hand side, we've got the 30, three tens, and the one, the 31. And across the top, we've got the two tens, so 20 and two. So Kim has completed the table for you. What you need to do now is, is find out, work out how many ones, how many tens, how many hundreds are there, and then a total answer. And then on question two, Amir is using base 10 to calculate 31 times 24. Add the missing information and complete the sentences. So this time, the values are missing from around his table. Do so you need to complete those? And then how many ones, how many tens, how many hundreds? Describe any exchanges and then give me a final answer. Okay, so pause the screen and have a go at those questions. Right, let's have a look. So Kim, if we look at his working, we can see that there are two ones in his answer. There are eight tens, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and six hundreds. Remember, it's just the numbers in this part of the grid, not the frame area, not the outside area. So just the area in here. So six hundreds, eight tens, and two ones. So all together, we've got 682. If you got that, give yourself a tick. Well done. And for this one, uh, the missing numbers, we can see that there are two tens in this frame here. So that's 20. And there are four ones in the frame here. So that's four. And then down this side, 10, 20, 30 in tens and one in ones. So 30 and one. All together, I can see that there's one, two, three, four ones. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen tens. And there's one, two, three, four, five, six hundreds. Okay. So the exchange you can make is you can exchange ten tens to make one extra hundred. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Those ten tens will make another hundred, which means altogether. We have got 744. Give yourself a tick and well done if you got that one. So let's look at this one. 21 multiplied by 12. Now this time, we're going to use our counters. So we've got 21 and 12, 10 and 2 ones. But it works in just the same way. So we're going to do 10 lots. Of 20, we're going to do 10 lots of one, two lots of 20, and two lots of one. Or we can use the numbers. Okay. And as we get more, more, more and more confident, then hopefully we're going to be using the numbers more often. It's exactly the same method. We're still multiplying the two numbers above and across, so 10 by 20, 10 by one, two by 20 and two by one. So let's see how this builds up. Okay, 10 multiplied by 20. 
is 200. And with numbers, 10 multiplied by 20 is 200. 10 lots of 1 is 10. 10 lots of 1 is 10. So exactly the same information, we just present it in a slightly different way. Come down to this corner and we've got 2 multiplied by 20, which is 40, and 40 here, and 2 multiplied by 1 is 2, and 2 by 1 is 2. Okay, so there's our completed grids. We now need to simply add up everything we've got within the white area of the grid. So we've got 200, 40, 10, and 2. And all together, that makes 252. So 21 multiplied by 12 is 252. Now, some of you might find adding in a number sentence like this more difficult. It's absolutely fine to add up vertically, so to do a column addition, especially when some of the numbers get bigger. Okay, so don't, don't feel you have to work in a number sentence, you can work vertically as well for the addition. All right, what about this one? Let's partition our numbers. So we've got 30 and four to make 34, and we've got 20 and three to make 23. We're going to multiply 20 by 30. And the easiest way to do that is to say, right, two lots of three is six, and I've got two zeros in my question, so I'm going to have two zeros in my answer. So two times three is six, zero, 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 zero. Now I'm going to do 20 times four. Again, two times four is eight. There's one zero in my question. One zero in my answer. Three times 30 is 90 because three times three is nine and there is one zero in my question. And finally, three times four is 12. To finish the question, we simply need to add up these four numbers. Now we can do it as a number sentence or as I said, you can set them up in a column in a vertical addition, if that's easier for you. But there's our answer. 34 times 23 is 782. 34 times 23. Let's work it through again. 20 times 30 is 600. 20 times 4, 80. 30 times 3, or 3 times 30, is 90, and 3 times 4 is 12, 782. Right, pause the video and have a think about this one. 53 times 19. Hopefully, you started with 10 times 50, which is 500. Then 10 times 3, 30. 9 times 50, which is 450. And 9 times 3 is 27. And when you added them all together, you would have got 1,007. Well done if you got that one. Right, it's your turn now. Use the place, uh, place value counters to complete the multiplication grid and the sentence. OK, so the question is all set out for you there. All you need to do is work out what numbers should be in the grid here and what the final answer is. Question four, using the area model, work out the following four questions. So I'd like your questions set out in this way, please, guys. Okay, I want to see your working. Pause the video. Have a go at those. Okay, so there's the answer for question three. We've got six hundreds. We have got 18 tens, so that's 180. We have got four tens, which is 40. And we have got 12 ones, which is 12. Altogether, that's 832. 
Give yourself a tick if you got parts of that correct. Well done. And question four. Four. The four answers are 392, 432, 770, and 1620. Okay. Give yourself a tick for each of those. If you've made an error in those, take another look at your grid and just double check each of the values. It's very easy to make a little mistake with your multiplication or even more easy to make a daft mistake with your addition. So always double check the addition. That's the end of the lesson. Well done, guys. You worked really hard there. Take care of yourself and I will see you very soon.